So welcome to part two of this web design series where we create a complete website from start to finish using industry standards. Now, by the end of lesson three, and we're on lesson two now, you should end up with, with something which looks like this. In fact, better because it'll be yours and it'll be customized. But for now, we need to learn a few basics, which are going to really set you up with a solid foundation. On the screen behind me, you can see Tim Berners-Lee under number one. And he was really the guy who was responsible for the web. You might want to look him up and do some research. Quite incredible. Now, the first website, first ever website which existed, was hosted in CERN in Switzerland. And you can see what it looks like under number two. And you can see it's very basic. And your first website is going to look something like this. But very quickly, after, after you've actually learned a few more skills, it's going to get very exciting. And it's going to look like one of the top notch websites that you see today on the web. But for now, let's get into a demonstration, which is going to show you how to make the quickest and the easiest HTML website from scratch. Uh, a quick demonstration is going to show you how to open up Notepad. So you use the search bar here to open up Notepad, which most computers should have. And we're going to build a very quick website in raw, basic HTML. First thing you do is you actually type in HTML and you end it using a backslash with an HTML. And these are called tags. This is an opening HTML tag and a closing HTML tag. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the head tags and for the body tags. And you can see we have an opening backslash, which gives you a closing tag. That is pretty much as simple as it is. But right now, we don't have any content in our web page. So in the body, which is where the bulk of your information, your coding will go, we're going to put in an H1 tag. And just like before, we're going to close it. And in here, I'm going to write my first website. This stands for header. And we have various different H tags, like we'll see in a minute, H2 tags, H3 tags, which give you different sizes of headings. I'm also going to add a paragraph tag, my first paragraph on my website. And I'm going to close it backslash P, which gives me a paragraph. Now, this is where the actual magic happens, where you save it and you turn it, you convert it into a website. It's as simple as this. You just go File, Save As, and you type in some name. You can call it website. You can call it COVID, anything you like. Choose where you're saving it. In, in my case, I'm saving it on the desktop. We will look at folder structure in a few minutes and in later lessons. So you call it something, website, as long as you call it .html at the end. So your suffix is .html. That will turn it into a website. And if you wait for a few seconds, you'll see on the left hand side or on the screen behind me, you'll see I have a website. If I click it, you have your first website. Now to actually edit that, and if suppose this was actually closed down, you right click and you say open with notepad and that allows you to add something else. So for instance, I could add a couple of more paragraphs. I could save that control S or I could say file save. And again, if I opened up my website, you would see the changes, the edit changes have taken place. So sublime text, you would simply type in sublime text and follow the instructions for download. If you're on Windows, or OX accordingly. It's very simple. You just click next, install it, um, make sure that you're installing the correct version of it. And once you've done that, you should be able to then search for Sublime Text and open it. Now, this is what it looks like. You can make a new HTML document. And it's not particularly different from Notepad, other than the fact that it color codes things and it makes things much easier, particularly as you grow. Um, as, a, as a developer and your site grows. Now, I haven't actually turned this into an HTML document, which is why it's just coming up as white. So if I say file save as, and I save it again, perhaps just on my desktop as something, let's call it website2.html, you can see that now it's a bit more user friendly. I can add things like h1 tags, it finishes off uh, auto corrects things for me as well, and it makes your job as a developer much, much easier. 
Now, one thing that would be extremely useful for you to do at this point is to set up a folder, a structure for all your websites to be held in. And you can do that by simply somewhere on your desktop or in my documents, clicking new and folder. You can call it something. I can call it viral, you could call it website. I'm going to call it website. And inside it, you can put the website that you just created, such as that one. You can then right click, perhaps just on the folder, and you could say you could open the folder in Sublime Text, like so. So I can say File, Open Folder, and actually open up the entire folder. And what that does is it just opens up my folder and I can see my web files inside there. And you can now work on them, edit them, save them, etc. So that's a very useful thing to remember. The second thing that I mentioned was a site called W3Schools. Now this particular site, and you can use the internet, you can Google for other different sites or different um, points of information and reference, is the thing that's going to really help you to get ahead with HTML and get really good and introduce new elements and features to your website. So I'm going to suggest that you look on the HTML tab down here and you look at all the different things that can be done to add to your website. So for, for instance, I could down, go down here and click on HTML formatting and it gives me ideas as to how I could make my text bold or make it italic. I could use additional features like the small element, or I could use different H1 tags or different heading tags like H1, H2, H3. So I can demonstrate that for you here. So in W3Schools, they always have, have a try it yourself, and you can see that this I tag here, opening I and a closing I tag, changes text into italics in the same way you can do the same for bold, for strong, you can change color, you can add images, and you can do a whole range of things just by looking it up and implementing it, integrating it then into your website. So for instance, if I went back to my website and I said something like I had a paragraph, let's make this a bit bigger for you, which said this is my bold paragraph. I could then add a strong tag around this text with a closing strong. I could make this particular letter or whole word italics in italics. And if I save that and open up my website, let's have a look at what it would look like. So you can see I have bold and then you can see that this is in italics. And of course, you want to develop this further to add things like images, you want to add hyperlinks. So let's look at a few tips and tricks and hopefully then you can get onto W3Schools and you can really explore the site to see what else you can do. Like I mentioned, it tells you absolutely everything. All you need to do is scroll down, click on try it yourself and it gives you the code that you can integrate into your website. So that's something for images. You also have things for lists, for tables, for forms um, and almost anything imaginable that you can do in HTML. Now, what we're gonna try and recreate is something like this. Before you say that that's the ugliest site you've ever seen, I'm gonna to have to agree with you, but remember we're learning HTML at the moment and next lesson is where everything changes. But for now, we need to focus on learning some of these basic skills. So adding an H1 tag, a smaller heading, some paragraphs, perhaps a list, hyperlinks, a button, a form, making text bold and italics. So as I go along, feel free to pause the screen and remember the main thing that you're gonna be doing is looking up this site, which is W3Schools, which gives you all the information that you need. So under HTML, you can look up, for instance, headings, or you could look up colors or images, and it would give you the code if you clicked on Try It Yourself, which you can then integrate into your website. So to begin with, we're going to open up my website, which is in, I'll open it in Sublime. You can open it in Notepad if you're still using that. 
I'm going to give it a heading. This time, I'm going to call it the viral website. I'm also going to add an image. Remember, if you're looking for an image, you go back to W3Schools. It tells you that the code for it is image source, and then you put in the URL of the image. And you can also change the height and the width of the image. So let's have a look for an image that we might like. Coronavirus binary or something like that. Um, click on images. Now, this is a good chance to talk about copyright. You should always look under tools for usage rights and try and look for something which is Creative Commons, which means it is probably fine for you to use for commercial or non-commercial purposes. So when you're doing that, make sure that option is being checked. I'm going to copy, right click and copy the image address and put it into my code. So let's have a look. I'm going to type in image source, paste in my code and close the tags. I'm going to control S it or con file save and open up my website again, which is there. You can see the image is very large. So if I simply go back and as it tells me in W3 schools, just decide on, on an image size, something like that, control S, go back and you have an image. Now it's not perfect. Let's just make it a bit smaller. and you can keep adjusting it as you see fit. Now underneath this, I'm gonna put in a hyperlink and you can do that again by Googling or using W3Schools. So if just try doing this. You can just type in HTML hyperlink and there'll be thousands if not millions of sites coming up with the W3Schools as you can see to begin with, which tells you how to do that. If I copy and paste that and put that down here, it gives me the code and it tells me that here is where you put in the link or the URL to which you want to go to. And this is the link text. So suppose my link text wanted, I wanted it to be something like search for something. And I wanted to make this whole text a hyperlink. And in here, I'm going to type in say google.com and let's just see what happens. If I save that, and go back to my website. You can see it says search for something and it doesn't actually go to google.com because I've not linked it correctly. So if I type in it takes me to Google. And of course this doesn't look great and this is another opportunity for you to learn something about HTML and a few more tags. Now I would like a break between this image and this hyperlink. So what I do as this is the image just after it, I'm going to type in BR. In fact, I'm going to have two BRs. And I save that, go back. This is asking me to purchase it. I can just cancel that. That's fine. And you can see that that gives me a break. Now I'm going to add a list. So if I go back and I search for lists, if I can't remember how to do it, which is absolutely fine, it gives you some code for a list. So let's copy that. This is an OL, which stands for ordered list. And I would like my list over here. So I might have a he little heading maybe, which says, do you have symptoms? Close paragraph tags. And here I'm going to just put in the symptoms. Of course, I'm doing this really quickly. You can do it properly if you wish. Uh, loss in taste or smell. Change, I think it is. And of course, a high fever. And if I save that, I go back and again, I have a list. Now, this can just go on. There's so many different things that you can add. I could add a form. Try it yourself. It gives me the entire form. I can copy it, take it into my Sublime Text. Remember, you're doing all this coding inside the body tags. So if you put something outside these body tags, it will not actually display on the screen. 
So over here, I'm going to paste in my form and I might have a little heading there, maybe a smaller heading, H4 heading, which says, please fill in this form. Keeping in mind, this is not a final website. This is just an experimental website. So I've got a form on my website and you can keep going wild with this. I'm going to leave for you a challenge to find out how to put on a button on your website. Now, as I've showed you before, it is very important to be organized and to have a folder. So please save your website, not just in some random place, but in a folder. Most websites don't just have one page. They have multiple pages and they have assets, images, animations, videos, as you will have soon, uh, including styling sheets. So please save your website in a folder named appropriately. At this point, you are ready now to start creating this site. I want you to try and be as creative as possible and try and aim for all these 10 points. So for instance, make a basic HTML page with a header and a body and main HTML tags. Add some header tags to it, heading tags h1 and h2, h3. Make text bold and italic. Add a list, add an image, add a button, maybe add a form and add a table. And of course, make sure you've saved your website and a folder appropriately. So you can pause the screen again. And these are the steps that you need to follow. In the next lesson, we're going to be making it all come alive. So, so far, we've only used basic HTML and we have a site which looks kind of like it just came out of the 1990s. But we're going to use Bootstrap, we're going to use CSS, and it's going to become extremely, extremely different from the sort of basic HTML sites that you see now. So something to look forward to. One magical tip for this, this lesson, which I would highly recommend you did if you're interested in web design and going further with this, is to look up a website called codepen.io. Just check it out, and as we go along, you'll be using it more and more, and you'll see the potential and the value of this site. On the right-hand side, you'll see a site that you should have by the end of next lesson. And we'll be looking at how to style your website very easily using a few CSS tips and tricks to make it look more like the site which looks more professional as compared to the yellow site, which is a basic HTML site.